Okay, hello, Mr. Smithy, sir. I'd like a weapon. Ah, uh, Timmy, you made it to Iceborne. Yes, sir. Well, which one would you like, son? What? I thought there was only one. Timmy, I know that you know there's more than one. What? So there's, like, five? What? N no, Timmy, there are 14. 14? Are you crazy? How am I supposed to choose only one? Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, today is a day all about the truth, about grief, and also acceptance. For today is that most wonderful time of year where I piss off a large portion of the community. We all have our favorite weapons, the ones that we simply cannot put down while fighting. But how many people have really gone out of their way to try every single weapon in Iceborne? Watch the good players play them and then make proper endgame builds yourself to see how they feel. It's a significant process, it's no joke. And having done it myself, I can tell you all one thing. The weapons in Iceborne are absolutely fantastic. There is not a single individual weapon change that I actually dislike. And I think every weapon has progressed in a positive direction as a result. However, no matter how good every single weapon is individually, there will always be a bottom of the list. And it is important to recognize this and explain why, because that's just how we get improvement in video games. If you don't use your voice, no one can hear you and no one listens. So today, ladies and gentlemen, is my list of the top five worst weapons in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. She can't do that. Shoot her. Or something. However, that said, just like something as simple as literally colors, you may not agree with my favorite or least favorite, just like I might not agree with yours. And I think it is extremely important for all of you to know that even my least favorite weapon in the game, the one I think is currently just the least fun to play personally, is still a solid 7.5 out of 10 in terms of general fun. If Monster Hunter had only one weapon, and it was that one, I would still happily play this game. So rather than being straight up salty if you see your weapon on this list, maybe just take said list with a grain of salt instead. Number five. I like it. Glad to hear it. Why don't I show you what I can, what I can, what I, what else it can do? Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Switch axe. Now this is easily the truest example on this list of a weapon that is only here because I like the other ones better. Don't get me wrong, I like Switch Act. In fact, in Iceborne, I love Switch Act. But there are just too many things that I love more. The new axe power-up is a neat addition that, while not necessarily changing the playstyle of Switch Act, does add a ton of depth, and the fact that you can zero some discharge while clutch clawed to grab the part you want is just a beautiful little bonus. If there was one place that I would pick at this weapon for, one place at all, it is the aiming of zero sum element discharge specifically, as sometimes when you go in for the attack, you just attach to like a shoulder when you're aiming for the head, and then jump over to the arm instead. Did I do that? Sure, a perfect player would work around this issue and then it wouldn't be a thing in the first place, but the fact that you have to work around it at all is honestly a bit of an issue as far as I'm concerned. But all things considered, the fact that this is the only negative I even have to say about this weapon says a hell of a lot about it in itself. This is a weapon that I would happily pick up and put in the time required to get properly good in, and honestly it would feel incredibly nitpicky to complain about anything else with this weapon, so I won't. Thank you for your time, Switch Axe. Please go back to being cool. Number four. Insect Glade. Here is where we start to get to a more interesting place. First up, I'll start with the good. I think the new moves added to Insect Glaive are absolutely phenomenal. The downward spike attack is a ton of fun. It looks great, and it has a useful place in the Insect Glaive's moveset. The other main addition is also fantastic. The ability to enhance your Kinsect using Slinger Ammo, which not only allows you to grab two extra X at once, but also extends your buffs, and then also gives you a little power bonus depending on the ammo type you used. The only weird thing about it is obviously you aren't powering your weapon with it, so I'm I'm nearly certain you're just feeding your Kinsec whatever random crap you pick up off the floor. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you stuff it in your face. Don't stuff it in your face. And these changes are great to a weapon I already enjoyed a fair amount. However, I do have two issues with Insect Glaive in its current incarnation. First up is the Kinsect management. Yes, this was made a fair bit better in Iceborne, but it is still a thing. You still have to collect buffs, and then at the end of a timer, you have to collect them again. And if the monster is being particularly uncooperative, it can take a ton of time and cause a ton of frustration. No matter how cruel it may sound, I do just feel like I would enjoy the weapon more without the Kinsect. End of story. My second issue is that the best damage that you can do 
while using the insect glaive is entirely ground based. I think we can all agree on one thing here, aerial insect glaive is fucking awesome. It is a ton of fun and one of the most aesthetically pleasing ways to play the game. However, in Iceborne, by playing that style of insect glaive, you're just gimping your damage numbers and by an absolutely significant amount at that. And then even if that isn't a thing that literally makes the weapon mechanically worse as a whole, it definitely makes me feel worse about playing it the way that I want to play it. And whenever I do play Insta Glaive, I have that constant nagging feeling that I'm just doing it wrong, and I hate that. Aerial Insect Glaive should be straight up regular Insect Glaive. As simple as that. Number three. Light Bowgun. This is where we start to get to a harder place for me, because I mean this in the most sincere way possible, I adore the Iceborne changes to Light Bowgun, I really, really, really do, to the point that both of these new weapon mods are quite literally my favorite parts of the whole thing. The special ammo counter move is just incredibly fun and makes for great cinematic gameplay, and the evade reload feels cool, it looks cool, and, and most importantly cuts down on your downtime during combat, which just makes you feel good as a player. And I have to admit, while playing with both of these mods on, I was having a pretty good time. However, that is like saying you love Greatsword, but the only parts you actually like are the guard mechanic and the upward slash. They're parts of the weapon, and every part of a weapon matters. But that is also the exact reason that I can't really fall in love with Light Bowgun on the merit of two parts of an entire playstyle. It's hard for me to pin down the correct words for this, but in Monster Hunter, in the combat style that we have in the game, I, I just don't enjoy the regular combat of the Light Bowgun. I don't enjoy rapid fire, and even in the best builds, the individual damage numbers are sort of sad to look at, which as much as I'd love to say doesn't matter, obviously does still have an effect on me. I mean, who doesn't like big numbers? Put your hand down, little Steve! At the end of the day, it is hard for me to really enjoy the general idea of this weapon. Heavy Bowgun is better as a pure gunner fantasy, and Bow feels like a way better fast ranged weapon, which leaves Light Bowgun in this sort of in, in betweeny place, and I do really hate in betweeny places. At the end of the day, I think Capcom have made fantastic moves towards making me want to play this weapon in the future. The new mods are ridiculously cool, but just on a very base conceptual level, I, I struggle to enjoy this weapon in the game that surrounds it. It simply doesn't gel with me as a player, as much as I hate to say something like that. Number two. Yeah. Dual Blade. And this is really odd for me. Dual Blades were my first weapon choice in Monster Hunter, the blindingly quick series of attacks drawing me in, and I do still love that aspect, the base idea of it. The new abilities in Iceborne are pretty neat too, as the Slinger Burst Dodge is actually incredibly useful and quite powerful, though the Clutch Claw combo attack is a little bit pointless, as the combo is long enough that it just isn't really worth the time. If you want to do damage, there are more damaging combos, and if you want to do Clutch Claw the Monster, there are simply better, quicker, and safer ways to do that. The ability exists Exist, but the amount you'll actually use it in combat is minuscule, so at the end of the day, the only real noticeable change is the dodge, which again, is decent, but it only changes so much. As I progress as a Monster Hunter player, as I get properly used to the fighting style and I get used to monster movements and all that fun stuff, I've found myself for the most part gravitating towards somewhat more complex weapons, and the reason for this is simply because I can. I'm more comfortable with the game around me, and therefore I can afford to think a little bit more about my weapon while I'm fighting. Dual Blades is sort of the exact exact opposite of that. The actual correct ways to deal damage are so mind-numbingly simple that there are only a couple of button combos you even have to know, and the situationality of the weapon is limited, meaning the only time you really change up what you're doing is if you're on a slope or near a jumpable wall, in which case you have fun and Beyblade like all hell. Otherwise though, you do the same simple attacks for the entire hunt, and before you say, well, why isn't Greatsword or Hammer here then? And the answer is just that they feel better. Both of those weapons have slow, hefty attacks, which means that your timing and positioning matter way more than at least it feels like they do with dual blades, and your flinches with those weapons also feel incredibly earned, and they give you an incredible reward in the shape of a high damage opportunity, as opposed to dual blades which just sort of keep on keeping on, constant small damage, death by a thousand minuscule cuts. The one thing that Iceborne could have done very, very easily to make me enjoy Dual Blades more is the addition of Mega Dash Juice. The consumable simply makes you stop consuming stamina for a short amount of time, and as you can imagine, that just changes the entire base feel of Dual Blades as a weapon. But at the end of the day, that would just be a nice quality of life thing, and unless some other changes were made alongside it, I just wouldn't see myself playing it. And that's not even a part of the game, so as it stands, I just don't see myself enjoying Dual Blades and Iceborne a whole lot more than any of the other weapons in the game, except for... Number one. He's got a sword! Hey! 
You idiots! We've all got swords! Sword and shield. All right, okay, sword and shield. I'm sorry, I'll say it right now. I apologize because I do feel bad. This list is hard for me, okay, guys? I honestly love every single weapon that is on this list before this one. Burn! No, but really, I love every weapon. And if the only weapon in Monster Hunter was the sword and shield, I'd still have a great time playing it. But as it stands, as someone who has proper sets for various weapons, I just don't see myself playing this seriously at any point. You can play the more aerial style of SNS for tons of raw, blunt damage, but not only is it it's damage done by the actual blunt weapons, but it's just more constricting and less fun than playing a regular blunt weapon. You can play a very grounded, fast-paced, elemental style of gameplay, but again, both damage and playstyle wise, if I wanted to play like that, I'd rather play dual plays. The one place where SNS really does shine, and it really is just definitely the best at this one thing, is support builds. As far as support efficiency, the ability to use items with your weapon unsheathed is simply unmatched by any other weapon, and even though Hunting Horn does take a different approach to support, it is pretty much undeniable that SNS does a better job of the pure support role. And this actually is the main reason that Sword and Shield was on my list of the worst weapons in base Monster Hunter World as well. It is very much a jack of all trades kind of weapon, and while it is the master of one thing, that one thing is only useful in any way in a multiplayer setting. And it only really works if your hunting partners are half decent and are playing in a way that revolves around having a support player in the party. Don't get me wrong, it's a neat build and it's a neat way to play, but it's such a tiny, niche build in the grand scheme of things and it just isn't enough to carry a weapon anywhere. The new abilities Sword and Shield Gun and Iceborne are actually sort of cool too. Specifically the dodge roll combo into Clutch Claw is fantastic, especially for a weapon that is uniquely capable while unsheathed. But I have somewhat mixed feelings about the proper new attack combo Perfect Rush. Conceptually I think it is neat and against the training post I actually quite enjoy it, but in terms of actual combat against a moving real target it's just a bit of a mess. First up the range is tiny as with many sword attacks with the weapon and this means that you have have to be in an absolutely perfect place to even start the attack and don't get me started on getting your character caught behind a monster wing because even with the player silhouettes on full blast it is impossible to see the visual cues for the attack in this situation and i don't know i guess as a whole the attack just doesn't really feel like it gels at all with the existing sword and shield playstyle to me it doesn't mix into the existing attacks it doesn't really change existing combos and hey it is a unique ability that does make an effort to differentiate sns from the other weapon options but it, it's like glue a light bulb onto a couple of sticks and calling it fire, it's getting there. If the SNS keeps changing in similar ways, it'll properly have its own identity and playstyle soon. But as it currently stands, in my opinion, the only reason I would want to play this weapon is a support build, and that situation is incredibly niche. So sword and shield, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but right now, you are my least favorite weapon. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Now some of you may be asking the big question here. What happened to Charge Blade? Charge Blade was number one on my worst weapon list for base world, and now it isn't even in the bottom five? What, what happened? Well, the answer is Savage Axe Mode. It gives the weapon a massive new option, and it is a visually stunning one at that. It actively improves parts of the weapon that already exist, while extending the capabilities of the weapon to make it stronger in different situations. It was honestly the perfect weapon change, and it completely changed the way that I feel about the weapon. Hell, maybe even after a bit more time with it, it'll actually crack my top five. However, as it currently stands, this little baby sits right in the middle. All right, everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been my top five worst weapons in Iceborne. Do you agree with my choices? Do you hate me for putting your weapon on this list? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love So let's start with something simple and say Oh we love your eyes When they're watching us play video games When we make a bunch of jokes that are kinda lame Or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters Or important important news about the kingdom and Amelia Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here Talking about the things you want to hear So if you want to be the first to hear Like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer Some of you are patrons even though We are all the noobs and you're the pros There's nothing we can do to thank you No really there's nothing Nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.